What's up guys, this is Nathan with mastersofmusic.com. For this video, I wanted to go ahead and put together a quick comparison between the Focusrite uh, Scarlett 2i2 and the 2i4. Uh, this is also kind of a comparison between the uh, first and second generation Scarlett devices. I'll go ahead and talk about the differences between the first and second gen and I'll also talk about the differences between the 2i2 and the 2i4. So I ended up buying this uh, 2i4 uh, a few months ago, I, I've been using it and for uh, recording guitars, and I really like it. It sounds good and it works well. But then uh, Focusrite came out with the second gen models here, um, and they have lower latency. So I wanted to go ahead and give that a try, uh, give them a try to see how well they work. So I'm going to go ahead and post a review of this 212 next, and I'll have some audio samples with it. But for this video, let's just go ahead and talk about comparing these two specifically, as well as the first and second generation devices. So. Uh, first off, let's talk about the differences between the first and second gen devices just from a visual standpoint. So uh, they got these new, uh, you can see these lines added to the gain knobs. Before it was just an indentation, so it wasn't too easy to see. Same goes for the monitor knob here. So I do like the added contrast with those. And we've also got uh, added contrast with the writing here. It's easier to read all of these than it is on these ones. It's a little bit more gray. Uh, a little bit harder to read, so uh, I got that update as well. So uh, the second gen models also have the uh, logo in white on top, in case you were wondering if you happen to see one used or something. Uh, that you can always tell the uh, first gen models, they have the white or the, the black logo, and the second gen models have that white logo. And then, of course, like I said, the added lines there. But otherwise, the, uh, the models look pretty much exactly the same between first and second gen. And they have the same names, they have the same amount of inputs and outputs, so there's like the 6i6 and the 18i8 uh, that's got 18 inputs and 8 outputs, so there's the different models, but they all have the same preamps, so they have the same sound quality. So the main improvement with the uh, second gen models is they have lower latency than the first gen models here. Uh, I already did a comparison, uh, I'll post the link under this with the exact numbers comparing the two. Uh, but basically, at the highest setting on the 214, uh, with my setup, I can get... Uh, 9.5 milliseconds latency is the best I can do with the uh, 214 with the second gen 212 here You can get it as low as 3 milliseconds uh, with my Windows setup So uh, there's a big difference in the amount of latency uh, So that's the biggest difference between these two devices uh, So there's been some other improvements with the second gen devices as well. Uh, they got uh, this new improved uh, Input jack here. So like the uh, first gen 212 is the reason I didn't get it is because if you have active pickups it will redline even at the lowest setting. So you'll have clipping problems if you have active pickups, but this one they fixed that. So I got some actives going right here, some Seymour Duncan blackouts. You have no problems running those. I can even turn it up a little bit there. Um, but yeah, so you got the uh, active pickups are supported with these lower end models now. So with the uh, 214 and the uh, upgraded models, and uh, you had this pad button right here, and the other ones do it via software, but the 212 and the Solo don't have that pad button, which takes off 10 decibels. Uh, and so they've actually increased the headroom on the uh, second gen models to add 8 decibels so you don't have that issue anymore so that's definitely an improvement there. So a couple of other improvements with the second gen models is they added surge protectors to the inputs and outputs uh, and it also supports higher sample rates now up to 192 kilohertz whereas the first gen models they top out at 96 kilohertz. So for me the latency improvement was definitely worth the upgrade going with the 2 and 2 I'm liking running this now. I had some issues with the drivers at first but then they updated them so now it's running really smooth. Uh, and I do like this 2 and 2 model. I'm going to go ahead and keep it now instead of the 2 and 4 just because I really do like that latency, uh, lower latency and it also helps with CPU usage as well because you can use higher uh, sample rates and still have uh, less CPU usage so it kind of helps with that as well. It's kind of a cool bonus. All right, so let's talk about the differences between the 212 and the 214 specifically. Uh, not like generationally specific, but just as far as the uh, features that they offer. So you both have, both of them have the two inputs, and it's the dual input jack, so you can actually plug in the uh, microphones. It supports the three-prong microphone as well as the regular uh, instrument cable. So you got the dual connectors there. You can plug in either of those. You can have them both running at the same time. So if you wanted to record two guitars or a guitar and a mic at the same time. So they both have the uh, phantom power switch. Um, they both have the setting here for line and instrument for your gain. Um, they both have the halos that uh, indicate if you're clipping or not. Um, like I was showing earlier with the uh, clipping here. So once you get in the clipping zone, it starts to go orange and then it will turn red to indicate when you're clipping. So that's how you can tell 
with those. Both of them have that same exact halo. Um, like I was saying, the uh, 214 adds this pad, which is nice for the active pickups because then it takes uh, takes it down 10 decibels so that you don't have clipping issues with uh, active pickups. But you don't need that now with the second gen model here, so it's not really an issue. Okay, so with the 214s, they also have this uh, direct input monitor. Uh, you can sort of blend it if you want just to have the input. You can have it to input, or you can have uh, the direct monitor uh, set here, or you can blend the two in between. You can also set the direct monitor to be stereo or mono. Uh, and then with the 212, it doesn't have that dial. It just has, you can turn direct monitor on and off. You can't blend the two source signals at all. So with the headphone jack, here's another difference. Uh, on the 214, you can set the output to one and two with the headphone jack or three and four. So you can actually have a uh, different signal going to your headphones than the uh, speakers. Uh, with the uh, 212, it's all set up on the same output since it just has the one and two output. So you don't have that added option there. So if we turn these around, you can see the difference here. We just have the uh, line outputs left and right here on the 212. And then the uh, 214 adds the RCA, the unbalanced outputs as well. So it has those ones, the balanced ones right here, and then the unbalanced. And then it also has the MIDI in and out, um, which isn't a huge deal anymore because most MIDI devices support USB. But if you really need a MIDI in and out, then the 214 is definitely uh, the one to go with. Because obviously with the 212, we just have the uh, line outputs, and then that's the USB connector right there. So we don't have any additional outputs at all. So that's where the 214 has the advantage. And other than that, they're both basically, they both sound the same, they have the same preamps. I did a comparison uh, with two direct input guitar signals and they sounded identical, so uh, between the first and second gen devices. So there's no difference as far as the sound goes between these two devices. It just sort of comes down to your inputs and your outputs. Uh, they got the same inputs, but it depends on what you want for outputs and if you want a different headphone monitor option there so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this review check out mastersmusic.com for the full review I got it all listed out uh, I'll put the link under the video as long along with the uh, latency comparison numbers if you wanted to look up the latency numbers on Windows I have those written down as well